Hi there, good afternoon. Uh, it's not going to be a dry session, so we're going <laughs> to just run it. That may sound very, very dry, but it's not. So um, I'm Don, and I'm from Media Design School. I'm also um, run the year two uh, program for the Bachelor of Media Design, uh, specializing in media design slash graphics. And I'm Simon Nichols, and I specialize in interactive design. And uh, we have a missing member. Uh, unfortunately, she's been called away for a family emergency, and it's Lucy. And she's responsible for the motion design aspect. So the three disciplines work together on a similar brief. And today, we want to talk about our experience with Auckland Museum uh, that we just completed. Yep. So we're just going to run through this kind of structure. So we're just going to have a brief introduction, um, how we set up the initial conversations, the process of the project, um, the outcomes that the students produced, and um, the reflections from both outside of things Media Design School and the Auckland War Memorial Museum. Um, so this project um, started about uh, May of 2016, I believe. Um, we ran it this year, so it was at the beginning of the year, um, probably about the same time, but it took about a year for it to be um, set up. Um, mm -hmm. We had to, um, uh, Jenny Marshall, who was um, at the Auckland M War Memorial Museum, um, contacted or met one of our um, I don't know what your title was, the industry... Industry uh, initiative yeah, manager. Person, uh, yeah. Project kind of manager at a, um, a conference like this and then the conversation kind of started um, and then eventually that produced uh, a, a brief um, for, this, for the students. She was very interested in our take. Uh, we took a very different tack from other uh, university uh, pedagogy because um, we are very industry aligned and and Jenny was very interested to see what can be done as far as uh, conceptual ideas were formed by uh, students who were between the 19 to the 25 year bracket using technology. I, and I think um, we're realizing, we're not from your, the glam industry, but we're realizing that people seem to turn over quite quickly. And so uh, maybe, I don't know, but Jenny's kind of left the museum and then we got in contact with Johnny um, Hui, uh, Dina Jestick, Nils, who you've seen um, talk maybe, and Brad Hawkins. Um, and then we kind of started the project. Um, so we're just gonna quickly talk about the process. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so so um, the brief, the setup process, took kind of the maybe the longest amount of time to, to sort to out because um, yeah. obviously with Auckland Museum they are doing a bit of a rejigging around in this around their spaces so we've had th they said oh we've got an opportunity for your students to come and engage with us um, with the spaces but we also have uh, we are bound with NZQA requirements as well for our degree so we needed to make sure that it benefited both parties, w whether it's going to align with our learning outcomes as well as giving uh, Auckland Museum uh, the best outcome possible. Yes. And, and the, the, it was kind of a back and forth process. Um, so we had several kind of meetings um, and the, um, we had to kind of work within our frameworks and make sure that um, the students weren't creating, or the project's briefs that we gave the students weren't too specific, so that there was enough room for, for exploration. exploration. Um, yeah. So, for instance, Dina came to us, we're just going to show you the briefs in a minute, um, but Dina came to us and said, we want an app for this, and we, we kind of went back and said, well, maybe we can take out the word app and we'll just have a project around what, mm. you know, the event that you're organising, and let the students come to the conclusion maybe through UX design that they needed an, an app. But I uh, think the biggest hurdle, the biggest hurdle was getting these youngsters to understand that the museum wasn't a boring place. When we first talked to them, their faces just went, <sighs> and we go, no, because one of the briefs actually concerned a hoarding space because they were rebuilding the, the Maori uh, section and there was, of course, divided the, off. The war. The war memorial part of yeah. the museum. And they said, do something with this hoarding. The students' faces just went, oh, it's just panels of wood. What do we do? But, so we had to align these briefs to really get them going. And in, in the process itself, we, 
the, the reason for sh sharing this experience with you is because we discovered that the students learn best when they are doing it themselves. We weren't on the ground telling them what to do. So these are the briefs. So these are the seven briefs that we eventually worked through, which um, were making our digital collections accessible, um, turning the building works into a feature, which we, at lunch yesterday, we put something onto the art wall. If you've looked at the art wall down. Upstairs. Uh, down on the atrium, uh, was it? Oh, upstairs. Upstairs, yeah. yeah, yeah so turning building works into a feature. Um, Pre-visit pre school pack, which was um, looking at um, customer experience of class visits. Uh, the weird, weird and Wonderful Children Interactives, Dinosaur Education Program, and this is the one that Dina, that I was talking about, uh, the app. Um, yeah, Dina runs the late program at Auckland uh, Museum and she wanted to engage um, yeah, with audiences that are deaf and hard of hearing mm -hmm. uh, in a better way. Um, so we, after we'd done that, we'd set up our initial um, briefing session. So we brought the students to the, to the, yeah, the theatre at yeah. Auckland Museum, which is similar to the sounding theatre here. Um, and uh, there's Neil, Neil's um, presenting one of the projects. Um, and so, yeah, we had all the students there. And then we let them loose in the museum that, that morning. So they, <laughs> <laughs> probably sure the first time go! that some you of them five minutes, go! to the museum. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so that was that was a great to kind of bring them into the spaces, and they they were instantly yeah. kind of engaged. Um. Yeah. So it was a team team. Uh, they were separate into teams. So we had twelve teams, and we had the seven briefs, and we told them, you get to only select one brief, and the students all picked out of a hat. So they all went, oh, great hoarding, <laughs> fantastic. Um, so. But strangely, the, the, the students were fighting over that. The, the, the late. The, the, the late. The hard the, of the hearing. Working brief. with the people with, that are deaf and hard of hearing. Hard of hearing yeah. um, which I found interesting because that was the most complex uh, problem, I think, in mm. my mind. Um, to me, also, I was, I mean, I really enjoyed the, I really like customer experience and UX, so mm. trying to get them to work with the school packs, that was. And my job was making it look pretty. Yeah. <laughs> Just make it look pretty. Okay, so briefly, I don't, uh, show of hands, we know what design thinking is. Design process, um, oh, good, we don't have to I was go trying to find, um, <laughs> you've probably all seen the beautiful diagram with the hexagons. Um, yeah, uh, I couldn't find the, um, the um, attribution for that, so <laughs> I changed that. I did have the hexagons, but this is another one in um, the IDEO's Design Thinking for Educators um, resource pack. So if you haven't heard of design thinking or you haven't heard of IDEO, um, Look up IDEO online. They've got amazing, amazing resources for design thinking, um, with kind of methodology and you know activities and, and, and what have you. Um, so yeah, design thinking is a kind of a process of empathizing, um, defining the problem, setting um, their own limits in it yeah. as well, limitations. Then prototype, ideation, mm -hmm. prototyping, and testing. Mm -hmm. So the students who are going through that that process, and this is the the I guess the less didactic part of this project. Mm. This is all they're doing. We've, yep. we've given them the brief, they are familiar already with the design thinking process and and also the, they were second year students so they're already familiar with the craft and their, their discipline. Then we've just kind of thrown yeah. them at the problem. Yeah. <laughs> um, so when the student starts engaging with the brief and formal, so following the design thinking process, they thought of the problem both from the technological side of things as well as the consumer side of things. So we're not only dealing with uh, Auckland Museum as the client, but we're dealing with its visitors. So as you can see um, from the glam sector, the visitors range from zero to 99 years old, male and female, and, and el something else. And all sorts, all ranges. So it proved to be very problematic when the target audience is so wide. How then do you address a specific design problem, providing a design solution to such a broad problem? So the student starts ideating and throughout this process, we've never told them to use a whiteboard. We never told them to use that. We never told them that technology 
has limitations. We just set them free. It says you can either be futurists and start thinking of potential technology that you can utilize in a museum space, or you can utilize current technology. So this isn't staged. I was super, I was really excited and happy to see the students pulling out the whiteboards in our spaces and just starting to use them. Um, just going to flick through because we're starting. We've been through 15 minutes yes. already. Um, so this is some of the technology that our students use. So this is a Trello board. I don't know if you've used Trello before. Um, it's a free online um, tool for uh, project management. It's uh, designed for the Kanban method. Um, but the students use this for their um, process and collaboration. So this is just two examples of the board. Um, we use Slack with the students for communication, another free online tool. So um, Pierre was talking yesterday about lots of free tools. There's so many um, for achieving things. So just going to quickly go through slides of students yeah. working. Um, so, they, so. so aside from the technological aspect of things, so the, the students collaborate amongst each other and they develop very competitive streaks from one team to the other. And that drove their own learning. So when some student says, we're going to do a, uh, an interactive holographic display, then the other students will say, well, we're going to do something else. We're going to do light projection, mapping, and all that stuff. And, and then, going, okay. Um, so the students may come up with this fantastic idea, but we had the clients come in several times. So here's Johnny and um, Brad. Brad in a meeting with the students, and the students are pre presenting their pictures and their prototypes and getting feedback from um, Auckland Museum um, staff. And so this is again, uh, there's Lucy, if you want to know what Lucy's the back, back of the head, head looks like. Looks like. Um, yeah, that's her. Um, <laughs> yeah, and students presenting in our space, and then it's uh, Johnny testing out prototypes. So from the user experience, uh, all the students were very concerned about was how is this going to form, form uh, for on the devices? like small handheld devices such as smartphones and iPads, or how does it work if it's going to be a large screen? Or is it going to be on the floor? Is there going to be um, projection mapping involved and stuff like that? So when the students finally did their final end pitch, think Shark Tank. So we told them, you have to be very convincing in your presentation. Uh, so they also learned on how to present well. Uh, as well as, as, well as um, coming up with all these fantastical graphics. Sorry, I just hate yeah. this photo. Why do you hate this photo? That's why my bald spot is in the photo. <laughs> <laughs> That's Simon, by the way, uh, his bald anyway, spot. So, uh, <laughs> so well, we're going to show you a couple of projects quickly. Um, so this is the team that was working on bringing the digital collections that the Auckland Museum has, um, making them more accessible to the public. So they came up with this um, system that was kind of like a Pinterest board that you would create as you walked around the museum. There would be um, stations, I don't know if we can see, no there's no image of it, but there's, there would be a little QR code next to the artifact. The artifact. Yep. So you would scan it with your phone and then you'd come out at the end and you could then see your board collected in this. They looked at the photography that the museum, that the museum had, they looked at the photography and they did these kind of flat lay uh, graphics mm. based on the collections. So yeah. they discovered that a lot of the collections were yeah. photographed in a particular way. Yeah, so the students thought bridal registry. I you can build, <laughs> you can curate and build your own collections where the outcome can be printed, displayed or loaded onto your own device that you can carry out yeah, of the they, museum. And they did um, other collateral in terms of promotion, promotion promotional materials. Um, this was another project for the... Was the it dinosaur. The, was it dinosaurs? For yeah. The dinosaurs. Um, and so this yeah. was more, it was aimed at a younger audience, and you could pull the children, children could pull out these torches, then shine. And it triggers an interactive display on it. On the, on the, on the large screen. Yeah. So this, they've conceived, this is very theoretical. Uh, so if you go back to that one slide here, all these torches here are uh, locked in with a particular code uh, that when it's pointed at, like say dinosaurs, pop-up windows will appear and maybe video feeds will also appear and it'll teach or, so, you know, yeah, So the students didn't actually make this but they did explore completely how it would be realized. So, and in the, the final presentation they, they explained the technology. showed the prototypes. Yeah. So they prototyped um, work and this was a video which I don't have but it showed the prototype. 
Um, and then a third group, um, I think it was the same brief as the last one. Mm. They did a 360, um, it was an app that had a 360 degree view of, um, you know, the view from an animal. So you could, yeah. so you could, you could pretend you're an animal and you could, you know, yeah. look at the world through their eyes. Um, yeah. It proved an interesting thing with, because one of the animals or creatures was uh, uh, an ant. So it actually went in into the, the ground and up onto the trees and it was very exciting. But um, in yesterday's VR AR session, um, for those who've attended, we talked about the potentiality of a bendable screen. Things that bend, it exists now. It's still not publicly accessible, but the students looked at it and go, hey, we can do something with this and LED screen that's Yeah, the students are really um, engaged with cutting edge technology. Yeah. Um, and so they were looking at things like bendable screens, they were looking at VR, yeah. AR, and they might, might not, in the, the space of time we give them, be able to uh, realize a project in VR, but they were prototyping. Um, mm. And they came up with a lot, they identified quite a number of problems problem areas, uh, they also identified uh, potentialities for such a technology and so yeah it was amazing even though some of them we couldn't launch right away but it was something that we could consider later yeah, on. So the last section we're just going to quickly um, talk about our, the reflection um, from us as um, lecturers and the um, Auckland Museum. Um, so from our point of view it's it's what we're trying to do at Media Design School is to connect with industry and have real world experiences um, because we're trying to create students that are, our motto is pri uh, creating students that are prized by industry. Um, so yeah, we really enjoyed and we found it extremely beneficial to work with um, Auckland Museum. The students were very engaged and produced a, a, a kind of great variety of kind of um, work. Yeah, I think, I think at the end of this experience, from the students' perspectives, is that they no longer view museums or stationary artifacts as boring. They look at it from their generation into that, this sort of space. And it becomes their space when they are more engaged with it, using a device or digital means or whatsoever. It's no longer something that is just beyond them. It's, look, it's a Roman vase and they look at it and go, what is it? Mm. Instead, now they can say, we can use te technology, digital accessibility to bring this back with them. And that's what they feel that their generation benefits most out of spaces such as this. I think the benefit from us is that um, having, well actually I'll go on to their reflection. One of the, the, the things that um, they said, which I should have said at the beginning, was that the bureaucracy within our media design schools um, was very low. So um, they mentioned having to work or trying to work with other institutions and that the layers of bureaucracy was, was so much that they couldn't get access to the lecturers to create these projects, um, which was very interesting because there was like one layer between mm -hmm. us and, um, and, and, yeah. and Jenny. Um, some of the things that they said was that the time investment was actually larger than they thought. Um, so we had, you didn't see a picture of Dina there because she was kind of in and out, really busy. Yep. Um, they also said that actually um, we, we kept it kind of as a quite a small project. So um, Johnny mentioned that uh, it would have been good to have someone from management or executive involved in the pitching process at the end so that there would be better buy-in. Um, because he said that if a manager had seen some of these projects, it would have shifted what the Auckland Museum was actually doing. Um, so that was a really great bit of feedback that we were actually doing something that had a lot of impact on the mm. projects that were in place for the museum. Yeah. Um, also, um, one of the things was that the project was it was very self-contained. So there was no other content other than the, the, the presentations that the students made mm -hmm. and so um, next time what we might do is create some kind of um, you know exhi exhibition or, or other to, to further um, kind of promote the work mm. um, yeah it leaves quite a bit of a few questions so for yeah. me I find that it opens up uh, more questions actually about how sustainable if we rely on 
new technology all the time for novelty's sake or for archival sake, then how then do we make it new all the time? You know, so that is something that maybe if we continue working with Auckland Museum, maybe that's something that we can work into the briefs as well to address how do we then keep up with technology and keeping everything abreast? Yeah, they, yeah. We, um, the briefs weren't open enough, I think we realised at the end. Um, so, yeah, they were, they were too specific. Um, but um, Johnny said they actually they should have been further targeted into a specific audience. The audience was, were too broad. Um, or actually just left up to the students. Um, the museum did present us at the beginning um, the demographics. So we knew that it was, it was um, young mothers and um, Grandparents. Then kind of older people like, yep. um, that were the audience for the museum. Mm. But um, they did say that actually getting young adults, like 18 to kind of 25 year old um, people, and was beneficial for that kind of, you know, uh, creating something for that audience. Mm. Yeah. So they, they, in terms of the, you know, um, Auckland Museum and I assume a lot of other um, glam um, sector kind of people need to connect with tertiary education and so this was um, mm. a really good way for the Auckland Museum to do that. Mm. Alright. Um, yeah, that's it. So we've got a couple minutes I think for <laughs> questions. <laughs> Yeah, three three minutes. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? The crate thing. Yes. We'll just get the microphone to you. Did the, the crate thing get did the crate thing get made into an app? No. So it was all prototyped. So the students only had eight weeks for this. So I love that idea. Yeah, yeah, they came up with amazing ideas. So I think yeah. if you do we have copyright? No, the the, the can, so can they steal it? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Money goes no, to oh me. Sorry, dude. Um, <laughs> no, the the they the students did prototype it to a workable yeah. app, but it only was a few layers in. So they were only just pitching the idea, but they wanted to make it. Yeah. So again, with like free tools, this this was a working. Yeah. Uh, it was a prototype, a high fidelity pro prototype. Yeah. So. so we do. <laughs> yeah. Our students can. Yeah, they're in. Yeah, that. Yeah. And this yeah, is Mandy, own, sorry, and this is also from Media Design Ella, yeah. School. Yeah, yeah so awesome. you can't steal the idea. <laughs> <laughs> Come and talk to us, and we might negotiate a, <laughs> a plan. Yes. Yeah. 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 So what the the um, Auckland Museum when they sat down for the proper pitch, the Shark Tank pitch, they were very excited, uh, and they kept saying, oh, could you play it back again? Could you play it back again? Oh yeah, there was a video yeah. with us in that, yeah, that was yeah. repeated Because times. Uh, please, <laughs> <laughs> we're excited. It makes us feel excited because, you know, there's just some, some content there that um, really excites both parties, which is great. Yeah. Uh, do you want me in thanking um, Simon and Don? Cool. Thank you very much.